Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me is Mangalam Malu. Mangalam, good afternoon. Nice. Markets at the high point of the day at this point, both Sensex as well as Nifty about half percent up each and mid-cap index is also in line with those gains. What's really taking the charge in terms of leading the gains for the overall markets is Bank Nifty and most of the banking stocks are the ones along with ITC are what are really contributing to the gain in Nifty 50. As far as the draggers are concerned, well, the IT pack is the one which is a laggard in trade today. And uh, market breadth, well, that's looking strong at this point, Mangla. All right, yes, market breadth looking fairly strong. In fact, what has happened is that, uh, you know, the Asian markets, they ended at the high point of the day. Now the advanced decline lines, they have uh, intersected and the green line is above the red one. More importantly, the European futures, they indicate a gain of almost a percent for all the three frontline European indices. In the meanwhile, we'll watch out for the, uh, the, uh, uh, the commentary that is coming in. There is no change in FDI policy on food product retail trading. And that was an important one because remember earlier the street was worried and that is why we're seeing a bit of a reaction on future retail ever since the policy that came by Kishore Biani we had him the next day he said that this could impact grocery retailing because grocery retailing is something that involves inventory and there we have it uh, because of which we saw uh, there could be trouble in the deal with uh, impending deal perhaps with future retail and Amazon and from there the stock fell from 460 to about 560 to about 460 where it is right now has been under pressure and now with this clarification coming in the road to rediscussions and renegotiation renegotiations for that deal opens again mm. and which is what the street is taking heart from and the stock has recovered from the lows of uh, trade so there has been no change in FDI policy on food product retail trading and that is something that uh, the street is taking heart from all the change that has come in yes. is for b2b not b2c and there yes. we have it uh, future retail recovery oh yes recovering quite fast and uh, manglam has just said it it's a very very important clarification that is coming in and that stock is taking cognizance of that let's move on to a cnbc tv 18 exclusive then and according to sources icici bank and access bank have received full payment for sr oil rosneft deal in q3 for really providing loans in the past to that company. Nimesha joins us with all the details on that, Nimesh. What I've gathered is uh, both ICC Bank and, and uh, you know, you know Axis Bank, who are the Indian lenders to this whole uh, SR oil deal, they've got the money in, in, in the December in quarter. So ICC Bank has received close to $540 million uh, as part of the Rusev, uh, uh, you know, SR Rusev deal. And Axis Bank, uh, what I understand from sources, has got close to 600 crores uh, as part of this whole, whole deal. So both the, both the banks have got the money is what I understand from sources. Uh, and, and given that both the banks had fully provided for these loans in the past, this will directly flow into, their, uh, in, into the balance sheet and into the p in, in the Q3 numbers when they report uh, later this month. In terms of responses, Axis Bank said they cannot comment on client-specific matters, whereas we, we, we yet to get a response uh, or uh, you know, a response from ICS Bank. So clearly, no, uh, uh, none of them have confirmed or denied this story. But I do understand from sources that both ICS Bank and Axis Bank have got the full final payment uh, as part of the deal, uh, which was between SR Oil and Rusev. All right, uh, and banks have written to the new RBI governor, Shakti Kanta Das, listing out their grievances and demands. Ritu Singh now joins in with more details. Ritu, what exactly are the contents of this letter? Well, sources have told CNBC TV18 that banks have written a letter to the new RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das on several concerns faced by the banking industry. And this letter was sent soon after the governor met with all bank chiefs in the month of December. Now, first on the issue of the Feb 12 circular on bad loans, banks have once again requested that RBI do away with the one-day default rule and instead allow financial resolution to start only after 60 days. Among other things, banks have also requested that NCLT referral for initiating bankruptcy proceedings only happen after 60 days uh, of a resolution plan failing instead of 15 days as is currently stipulated. Secondly, on the more important and pressing issue of the INFS group loans, banks have expressed concerns that lenders have so far been restrained from initiating any enforcement action for the recovery of their dues because of the NCLAT order and that a substantial portion of the 60,000 crore exposure of the banking system to the 
this group is at the risk of becoming non-performing is if RBI does not intervene and therefore banks have sought a standstill agreement or arrangement for these loans for a period of at least six months. Third, banks have also sought relaxation in risk rates for exposures to corporates and retail in line with Basel III requirements, which will allow capital requirements to come down anywhere between 25 to 40 basis points across banks. Fourth, banks have also sought a one-time restructuring relief for MSME loans, which we know RBI has now recently allowed. Also on the issues of ATMs, bank did seek various relaxations on cassette swap rules and the change of EVM chip cards, uh, etc. Uh, and we understand that RBI officials will be holding a meeting with the banking industry body, IBA, on the 17th of January to address some of these issues. All right. Thanks, Ritu, for putting all that into perspective, an important development there. But uh, moving on to two important factors which really rule the roost for our markets. First, the currency, rupee movement, as well as uh, in commodities, crude. So Manisha Gupta is right here to give us a status check on both. Manisha. Misha, thank you so much for that. Well, we have seen a very volatile crude oil prices continue, but we started Asia on a weaker note because of the economic growth concerns. Remember, the U.S. manufacturing data has been the weakest in last two years, and that really seemed to be impacting the prices. But the kind of gains that we are seeing on the screen right now come in on the back of the OPEC cut by nearly half a million barrels per day in the month of December and the expectation that the OPEC and allies will be able to cut 1.2 million barrels per day in the month of January. There is a report, a published report expected from the OPEC and allies by the end of this month. And the markets also are looking at various oil minister reports saying that if these cuts are not sufficient in the April review meeting, there could be deeper cuts that could be allowed in. The third reason that you have seen the crude oil prices see a bit of a support really has been the involuntary cuts from Libya, Nigeria and Iraq and then the US weekly inventory data also shows four and a half million barrels of a decline in the inventories and that has been supportive. If you look at this week we seem to be headed with gains. US crude is up by three percent, Brent is up by six percent as well. So after that dismal performance that we have seen in 2018 at least the first week of 2019 seems to be closing positive for crude. Can't say the same about the rupee because very, very volatile moves while, of course, today is a better day. But if you look at the first week in sense of rupee as well, we are down by 7 tenths percent uh, in, in this year after that 9 percent decline that we saw in the previous year as well. Some bit of gains that you are seeing today is because of the weakness in U.S. dollar. Uh, that is because, again, again, because of the U.S. manufacturing data. Most of the Asian currencies are trading half a percent on the higher side and that in turn seems to be supporting the rupee as well in the trade. Absolutely, Manisha. Thanks a lot for that, putting both crude as well as currency in context. However, it will be very interesting to see what happens to the currency from here on. It's at the high point of the day and with the crude prices moving closer to $57 per barrel mark, let's see where the currency goes. They're closely interrelated as far as our macros are concerned. Crude just a couple of days ago was at $53 per barrel. With that, we take a short break, come back, we get you a snippet of our exclusive conversation with Shesha Giridao of JSW Steel on the other side.